dear students today we shall be talking about one of the important topics of ecology and that is ecological succession by the term succession we mean to say that something coming after another in a chronological fashion or we can say the simple community being replaced by another community if we talk about the ecological succession succession describes how a community changes after a physical or biological disturbance such as when a farm is abandoned or a forest grows after a string of temporary communities in a sense we might consider these transient communities to be developmental stages similar to the stages of the life history that many species go through before reaching adulthood so in this very lecture we shall be talking about what ecological succession is and what are the types of the ecological succession before proceeding it is my request to you all to like and subscribe my channel biolearnia now whenever the ecological succession comes into our mind there are certain names which also come in our mind so some of the names uh, such as the botanist warming one of the botanist that is warming and cools cools these are the names of the two scientists who investigated the stages of the sand dune growth contributed significantly to the creation of the notion of succession there are many more names which we shall be talking in this lecture now when we talk about ecological succession we say simply that it is an understanding of ecological succession which provides a basis for resolving man's conflict with nature so when we say a, is such a kind of understanding of ecological succession which provides the basis for resolving the man's conflict with nature this was the beautiful statement given by eugene p odom this is the main who gave this very statement it provides a basis for resolving the man's conflict with nature when we talk about ecological succession it is the process by which the mix of a species and habitat in an area which change over time so ecological system by the ecological uh, succession we mean to say that it is such a process by which the different kinds of species and habitat in an area they change over time and gradually these community communities replace one another until a climax community reaches so all these very temporary communities they are replaced by the complex communities and in the last there is a climax community which is a stable community and that very climax community can be a mature forest or a uh, grassland until or unless so climax community reaches until or unless there is a certain kind of disturbance the disturbance in the form of the fire disturbance in the form of erosion disturbance in the form of ecological you can say volcanic eruption so ecological succession is fundamental concept in ecology and when we talk about the ag tensely when we talk about this very man ag tensley he first proposed the term ecosystem in 1935 and he said that ecosystem can be defined as an integration of living organisms in a given area but it is also the integration of living organisms in a given area but on the other hand with the physical factors of the environment so here in this very ecosystem when we talk about the ecosystem here in the living organisms interact among themselves and also with the abiotic factors of the environment so it results in the flow of energy which causes development of distinctive trophic structure in a given system so when there is interaction there is flow of energy which cause the development of distinctive trophic structure in a given area now ecosystem development this refers to ecological succession so whenever we talk about the ecological succession it is actually the development of the ecosystem so when the ecosystem dwells towards the climax community towards the stable community we say that ecosystem is developing or there is ecological succession 
when we talk about ecological succession it is a temporal change in community structure so when there is a temporal change in community structure we say that it is ecological succession so autotrophic succession such as um, we do have the hydrocere lithocere heterotrophic succession which causes the major changes in the spe species composition and diversity during each succession so the autotrophic succession such as hydrocere lithocere and heterotrophic succession they cause major changes in the species composition and diversity during each level of succession so in addition structural changes in succession there do occur some functional changes such as bioenergetics so now one community is being replaced by another community the there is flow of energy and then later on we say that organisms are interacting energy is flowing and in addition structural changes in the succession there occur some functional changes as well and we call it as the bioenergetics according to odum 1963 ecological succession can be defined by various parameters now what are those very parameters by which the ecological succession can be can be uh, defined by which the ecological succession can be elaborated we can say that it is a systematic process so it is not a random process but it is a systematic process in the development of community so systematic process in the development of community which is directional and predictable there there are two things to be kept in mind that it is a systematic process which leads to the development of a community and secondly it is directional and predictable that is we can predict it we, by looking at the community which is present today certain at certain place we can predict by seeing at that very community that which community is is um, following this very community which community is coming next so as a result we say that it is predictable then ecological succession begins with alteration of a biotic factor of the environment now it is not only the alteration in other processes but herein what happens that one in the ecological succession succession when the ecological succession begins there is alteration of abiotic factors of the environment because of the community itself so ecological succession begins with the alteration of the abiotic factors of the environment which is caused by community itself so now in other words we can say succession is a process which is controlled by community and patterns that are governed by the physical environment so on the other hand we can say that the ecological succession is a process which is controlled by community and patterns that are governed by the physical environment however the degree of the change in the community determines how far the development can go now again we can say that the ecological succession is such a process which is controlled by the community itself and the patterns that are governed by the physical environment now again the degree of the change in community it determines how far the development can go and it reaches to a stabilized ecosystem so after the develop one developmental stage after another developmental stage it reaches to a stabilization and this very stabilized state is called stabilized ecosystem so we are maximum biomass and interaction between different living organisms are sustained so when there is a stabilized ecosystem there is maximum biomass maximum interaction between different living organisms and they are sustained per unit of the energy flow in the ecosystem so it means it is towards the equilibrium now and each step in the process of succession when we say that there is a every step the one step one step one being followed by step two step two being followed by step three so this is the simple community this is the more complex community this is more complex community than second so each step is a process of succession 
succession and this is called as this this every stage is called as this serial stage so this is one serial stage this is the second serial stage and this is the third serial stage so first community is called as the first community which comes first that is there was nothing else but the first community which emerges which invades and that we call it as the pioneer community and the last stage we call it as the climax community so first stage is called as pioneer community the last and the stabilized state is stage is called as com uh, climax community so pioneer community may be replaced by many communities to reach the climax community and those very communities in between the pioneer community and the climax community they are called as the serial stages so all those very stages which lead to the formation of a climax community we call those very stages as the serial stages whereas the climax is considered to be relatively the the most stable last stage of the succession and the entire sequence is called as siri or sir many times we know it by the name such as if this these very serial stages are replaced in water we called as hydrosphere if they are replaced on land or rock we called as the lithosphere if on the sand we call as samosphere samosphere or samosphere now what are the types of the succession so odum and pink i was telling you that many names are associated with the succession and important some of the important names are also odum and pinkerton they these very odum and pinkerton in 1955 they introduced the functional change in the communities during each succession by explaining the flow of energy in developing communities so odum and pinkerton 1955 they introduced the functional change in communities during each succession by explaining the flow of energy in the developing communities and then according to margleff 1963 with progressive changes the succession attains maturity so after each and every progressive stage the community reaches towards the mature so this is further elaborated by odum in 1971 as the ecosystem strategy he called this way of attaining maturity as the ecosystem strategy and according to this according to this very statement there is a tenden tendency of homeostasis in any ecosystem during unfavorable external environment so according to this when it, this uh, this each and every succession each and every serial stage that leads to the maturity and there is a tendency of homeostasis in any ecosystem during the unfavorable external environment now on the basis of energy on the basis of energy or energy relation and nutrition relation succession can be divided into two types so succession can be divided into two types on the basis of the energy and nutrition relation so it can be autotrophic autotrophic and it can be heterotrophic so autotrophic succession and heterotrophic succession so when we talk as the name indicates auto means self so in this type of succession rate of production rate of production is more than rate of respiration so it means the self you can say um, the on the there the plants are more it means the those very organisms which can make their own food they are more than that of the organisms which are dependent on them so this kind of autotrophic this kind of succession is called as autotrophic succession here in the uh, the rate of production is more than the rate of respiration and here in we can say rate of production is more than that of the rate of respiration and initially primary producers are in majority and but later on biomass of organism increases and the ratio of production and respiration it becomes equal to 1 so in this type of succession rate of production is more than rate of respiration and initially primary producers are in majority that is why production is more than respiration but later on when the biomass of the organism increases rate of production becomes equal to rate of respiration or it remains 1 p is equal to r 
so the diversity of species increases with increase in the organic matter content as well diversity of the species also increases as the organic content increases the diversity of the species also increases and as a result when we say as a result available energy and biomass information content it increases in climax community so in climax community the in biomass information content increases and the available energy also increases now the second um, kind of the succession on the basis of nutrition uh, and on the basis of the uh, energy is heterotrophic succession so in this type of succession initially the ratio of respiration is respiration is more than that of the production so here in the earlier case we saw that rate of production was more than that of the rate of respiration but here in this very case rate of respiration um, in the earlier case rate of production was more than rate of respiration but here in this very case ratio of respiration is greater than that of the production so it is characterized by dominance of the heterotrophic animals so earlier case it was um, characterized by the dominance of the autotrophic uh, um, autotrophic organisms uh, and this type of succession starts in an area which is rich in organic matter so heterotrophic succession it starts in an area which is rich in organic matter so um, taking an example that small areas of the rivers when we when we take the certain example we say that the small areas of rivers and streams which receive large amount of sewage or leaf litter so they can be the examples of the heterotrophic heterotrophic succession then um, in addition to the autotrophic and heterotrophic succession there are also different types of the succession based on the availability of the nutrients in the soil so how the nutrients are present in the soil uh, on the basis of that the succession can be the primary succession or secondary succession so when we talk about the primary succession this type of succession occurs in the area where environmental conditions are elementary that area is first time occupied by few simple living organisms so in the layman's language i may be telling you when when the succession takes place in an area which is nude which is virgin which was not occupied before by any organism this kind of succession is called as primary succession so this type of succession is called as primary succession primary succession occurs on the virgin land that has never experienced any life form so that very kind of succession which take, takes place on the nude and virgin land wherein there was no life earlier so this kind of respiration this kind of succession is called as primary succession it always starts in uninhabited uh, barren area uninhabited barren area like rocks which was not initially occupied by any type of community and the conditions of the area was not favorable for the existence of any life so that very kind of succession which takes place in uninhabited barren area such as rock or we can say the nude area or the virgin land where there was no life earlier we call such a kind of succession as the primary succession so it can take place take place on land it can take place on on the water so if it takes place on the rock we call it as a lithosphere if it takes place on the sand we call it as a samosphere if the, if it takes place in the salt water we call it as the halosphere or if it takes place in the water fresh water we call it as the hydrosphere so there are various serial stages through which it passes and reaches to the climax community or certain mesophytic transitional stage which leads to the climax community then there is uh, another kind of succession that is secondary succession this very secondary succession occurs in the area which was previously occupied by some type of community so it means that very area was was occupied by certain communities but due to certain disturbance that very area became barren 
that very area was destroyed and later on there is again the process of the succession and this when there is again the process of succession this kind of succession is called as the secondary succession so the land which is under the process of colonization has been devastated by some natural or human influenced activities so once area which was having the good number of the communities having the growth of the different organisms there but that was devastated by certain natural or human influenced activities such as burning of the forest deforestation excessive grazing or abrupt changes in the climatic conditions such as floods tsunami or cyclones they may be called as the secondary succession so after several years some new community again occupies that very area so this very succession is called as the secondary succession so once was having the certain communities or organisms but was devastated devastated and then after several years the, again the community began to occupy this very land there is again the growth this kind of succession is called as the second then the third one we know it by the name of the cyclic succession or the seasonal succession so unlike the secondary succession these type of vegetation change they are not dependent on the disturbance but they are the periodic changes periodic changes arising from the fluctuating species interactions or recurring events so these very these very models propose a modification to the climax concept towards one of the dynamic states so the for example in this very picture we can see that die atoms they start emerging they start coming in the spring there is a peak uh, up to the extreme summers and then there is the growth of the green alga then comes the blue alga and then there is again the growth of the die atoms during the autumn season so in a cyclic manner they come and go so this kind of succession is called as the cyclic or the cyclic seasonal succession then uh, another uh, kind of the succession we know it by the name of the autogenic succession so auto means self so the communities that are formed during the process of early succession in a given area they react themselves with the current environment and thus modify their own environment so those very communities which react with themselves or among themselves and this very current community modifies community modifies uh, their environment and then there is replacement of its own community that is they are themselves responsible for the replacement of their own community by the new modified community such a kind of succession is called as autogenic succession so this type of succession is called as autogenic succession as it is self created succession so the succession which is self created where in the communities they react themselves with the current environment to modify the environment so that it is suitable for the growth of some other modified community such a kind of succession is called as the as, as the autogenic then we do have the allogenic succession when we say serial replacement of communities that is a serial serially the replacement of communities resulting from the external environmental factors so they are not responsible themselves but the external factors are responsible for the replacement of the community such a kind of uh, succession is called as the allogenic succession such as geochemical changes or other than the effects of the communities on the environment then environmental factors other than the effects of the communities on the environmental um, environment and the environmental factors can be geophysical or the geophysico chemical changes so this is the this is called as the allogenic succession and it may occur in highly disturbed or eroded area or in ponds where the nutrients and the pollutants enter from outside and modify the environment and which in turn change the communities so the external factors are responsible here so for example if we talk about a, a 
about a pond wherein the nutrients are coming from some other uh, sources or um, from the outside and they are modifying the environment of the pond thereby replacing the present communities with the other communities such kind of succession is called as the allogenic succession for example when we talk about uh, the um, talk about certain examples of the allogenic succession there um, this very allogenic succession has occurred over most of the northern america or north europe in response to climate warming and following the retreat of the last pleistocene ice sheet about 10000 years ago and nearly thrice the ice sheet has expanded and retreated causing a similar kind of advance and retreat in the biota as well so the climate change is responsible many ways or the retreat of the glacier are responsible for many many ways in replacing one community with that of the other such a kind of succession is called as the allogenic succession then another kind of succession we call it as the progressive succession so what is this very progressive succession so when we say it is a succession where the community becomes complex and contains more species and biomass over time so when a community becomes complex contains more species and more biomass over time there are three things are very important community becomes complex the species become more and biomass increases and that very kind of succession is called as the progressive succession it leads to higher community with mesic conditions and we do have the example that of the woodland stage to the climax community so here the woodland stage leads to the um, this very um, climax community climax forest stage so here in the species increased the biomass increased and that is why we call such a kind of succession as the progressive succession then another kind of succession we know it by the name of retrogressive succession here in this very uh, succession it is a reverse of the progressive succession the here in this very the complex becomes simple it is from the complexity towards the simplicity so it is a succession where community becomes simplistic com community becomes simplistic and contains fewer species less biomass so in the earlier case the community became the complex the species number increased and then biomass increased but here in this species became fewer and the biomass became less so sometimes a situation occurs in which a community deteriorates and the new community dwells which is simpler than that of the earlier community so there are many examples um, uh, in it uh, we know that after the depletion of the glaciers on the slopes of the flat terrains of alaska a typical succession produced through the herb and the shrub stage to the spruce forest so the earlier what happened that the when the there was a uh, retreat of the glaciers so there was succession which was progressive and led to the formation of the spruce forest so under the spruce tree there was a typical forest mosses and smaller trees so when these very spruce tree grew there was found typical forest mosses and smaller trees but sudden invasion of the sphagnum mosses so there was sudden invasion of the sphagnum mosses which were capable of holding the large amount of the water so when the sphagnum mosses they invaded that very spruce forest forest they were able to hold much water than the other mosses and that this very holding of the larger amount the water that very caused the death of the spruce tree trees and those very whole of the forest that that um, was um, um, totally exhausted that was totally devastated and that led to the um, again moving from the forest toward the shrubs uh, you can say community so this kind of uh, succession is called as the retrogressive so um, i was uh, last time again telling you that uh, when the um, when uh, there is a succession in water fresh water we know it by the name of hydrocere if the it is on the sand we call it samocere if it is on the in the desert it's called xerocere if it is on rocks we call it the lithocere if it is in the brackish water or you can say in the salt water we call it as the halocere so now what are the factors that cause succession 
So what are the factors that cause succession? So succession follows an orderly pattern of species replacement. I was telling you that it is a cyclic pattern. It is a, it is the um, pattern which can be uh, which can, which can be predicted. So it follows an orderly pattern of species replacement, which is initiated by disturbances. And these very disturbances, they are abrupt events that can drastically bring changes in the ecosystem characterized by removing organisms and opening up space and which can be colonized by individuals of the same or different species. Succession occurs under two main factors and we have talked about that the allogenic factors that is the um, external factors that is environmental, climatic or natural calam calamities such as fires, landslides, floods and it can be they can be autogenic factors as well such as immigration, death, decay of several serial communities uh, that increases the fertility of the soil and which is favorable for the growth of uh, new invaders and which can better adapt to these new environmental conditions and the reaction as being the driving force of the succession. So all these very factors, whether allogenic or the autogenic factors, they are responsible for the, they are the factors which cause the succession. Now, if we talk about the certain examples that uh, of the abiotic and the biotic agents that change and their effects on the organism. So many a times the waves and currents, they are responsible for the um, um, succession. And what do they do? They detach, injure or kill the organisms and we, they it takes place in the terrestrial habitat. And the example is the storm, cyclone, flood, tsunami, ocean upwelling. If it is the agent of changes, wind, the, again, they detach, injure or kill and the environment can be terrestrial or aquatic and then if it is a water supply it can be terrestrial or aquatic and leading to the growth rate effect uh, is affected injury and the killing and it can lead to the drought flood and, and mudslides if it is a agent of changes chemical composition it can act on both terrestrial and aquatic, aquatic environment it leads to the effect on the environment by the growth rate uh, um, is affected injury or killing and the example is pollu air pollution, water pollution and soil pollution. It alters the pH, salinity and nutrients. Then if the agent of change is temperature, there is excessive heat, cold, fire, glacial melting and it affects the growth rate um, and the injury and killing of the terrestrial and aquatic communities. If there is volcanic activity, it leads to the lava, debris, um, hot gas, mudslide, floods and it injures or kills the organisms and communities. It acts on both terrestrial and aquatic environment. Now, what are the uh, abiotic, uh, uh, abiotic factors which uh, lead to or which cause the uh, succession? The negative interaction which lead to competition, predation, parasitism and herbivory. They affect the growth rate, injury and killing. It affects on both the environments, both the habitats. Then positive interaction, mutualism and commensalism. The growth rate is affected. There is less injury or death and terrestrial and aquatic environment. They are both affected. So this was all about the ecological succession types of the succession and the factors responsible for the ecological succession. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see, you, um, see you next time with a new lecture that is the mechanism of the ecological succession. Thank you for watching and uh, it is my request to you all to like and subscribe my channel. Bye, Learnia.